It's Brad J. This is Tame Your Talent for your Sunday. And wow, Sunday, Tame Your Talent on the weekend coming at you. The 7th, uh, Daylight Savings Time. Was this supposed to be the last one? I don't know. I keep hearing stuff like that. Brad J. with you. This is uh, Tame Your Talent. You can follow Tame Your Talent and subscribe on YouTube. I'd love for you to do that. Do that on YouTube. Subscribe to Tame Your Talent right there. Uh, get all hooked up on there. That is YouTube. Also, the email, tameyourtalent at gmail.com. And uh, my social media, at Brad J-A-Y-M-C, at Brad J-A-Y-M-C. Also, remember, I do a radio show. Not today, the being that this is the Sunday. And I do not do a radio show on Sunday, a classic rock show. But pretty much um, the other six days, I do. And if you're in Santa Barbara, you can listen to it uh, live on the airways at 99 on your FM dial. And if you're not in the Santa Barbara or Ventura, California area, you can uh, get that just by uh, going online, ktyd.com, ktyd.com. That uh, is the website where you can listen live. And I'm on at 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. Now, that's on the West Coast, California, West Coast time. Uh, So 7 p.m. all the way to midnight, ktyd.com. So if you're Hey, man, if you're a classic rock aficionado or you're down with some classic rock, then uh, tune into the show. Love to have you as part of that. Uh, On the show, well, yesterday, kind of skipped it. I always try to take at least one day off on the weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. And uh, yesterday for me, it was just like, you know what? I'm taking Saturday off. Big stuff around here is now I have a studio here where I do my radio show from and where I do my podcast from. Uh, in uh, in my little hometown of La Conchita, California. And getting news yesterday, how's this one? They're going to be filming a movie basically not more than about uh, 30, 40 yards from where I record this. And they're going to be doing it for a month straight. Eight in the morning, all the way till, uh, to 8 p.m. And they got permits. Not that I'm going to be that neighbor that complains, hey, you guys are being too loud, man. Can you quiet it down? Not in that voice, but you know what I'm saying? But so they're going to go. They're filming a movie, and it's um, going to be taking place in the alley, and they're going to take over our alley for, and that's kind of my in and out. I kind of enter through my alley. But they're going to uh, take over this all the way for about a month. And it's going to be weird. And I'm supposed to actually be in this movie playing a DJ, actually playing myself. Now, this movie is supposed to be about uh, an older couple that lived in our town here in La Conchita who have both passed away. But the movie is about their life and what they did. And uh, one of the scenes in the movie, and this is like a a professional television crew. This isn't just like somebody with his iPhone shooting a movie. It's it's a full on production, and back in the day when this couple was alive, and I was raising my kids, and we're you know we're going down to the beach, and I would DJ on the beach. I'd bring my DJ setup to the beach, set up a table up in the rocks, we get it all dialed in. We'd put a generator way up high, uh, up on on the road on the freeway, so you couldn't hear it down on the beach, and I would rock out. And so I guess. One of the parts in the movies is supposed to take place in one of these beat scenes that actually took place back in the day. Like, man, I don't even know, 2000, I'll say 2005 or so, something like that. And I've been asked to play my younger self. So it's not a big stretch. <laughs> but I've put, put some uh, some color in the beard, but there you go. Uh, so a movie is going to be filmed and. Since you uh, got the podcast, you're going to you're gonna be able to uh, get a first-hand account of what goes on. And also, one thing I want to say about the podcast, like I was doing this before, and I, and I never really kind of knew what to do with the podcast. Do I make it about snowboarding? Do I make it about skateboarding? Do I make it about surfing? Do I make it about mountain biking? You know, what, what do I make it about? And then I just, it kind of just morphed into just, you know, talk stories about things that have happened over your couple of decades of professional announcing. And there's plenty of stuff like that that's happened to me over the years that uh, I could keep talking about pretty much daily. And that's what I've done. I've had a radio show. I've been a morning show host. So (laughs) for me to just 
turn on the mic like we're doing right now and just start talking about things, it makes it easier. I come up with ideas of what I want to talk about, think about it, and then this there it kind of comes together. And, you know, there you go. But at first, you're like, you're not comfortable. You know, you're trying to do a podcast, and you're like trying to be someone you're not. And then you start thinking to yourself, you know what? It's going to be a whole lot easier, Brad J. Yep, third person. If you just focus on just being you, just like you're talking, like pretend the mic is another person, and you're just talking to it. Okay, turn it on so you're picking up the volume because that kind of helps. And so at first it was like I was more announcer guy. And then now I've been kind of like telling the stories. Okay, so anyway, so blah, 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 blah. Keep talking about a bunch of dumb stuff right now. Maybe not dumb. I don't know. Uh, formula. Things are always kind of a formula for me, and it always kind of has been that way. I look back to just some of the earliest days of, I mean, even washing dishes as, as, a, as a bus boy at like 14, 15 years old at a restaurant. I'd always have a formula on how I do it. Like I would do the big pans first or I would do the stuff that wouldn't dirty the water first. Like what was the plan? And it was always a formula that I did. And so I moved on to like waiting tables. And then I'd try to have a, it's always about a formula. So like becoming one of the, I was definitely one of the top waiters. I'd have to say late eighties, early nineties uh, in Santa Barbara on the water. I mean, prestige spot, like one of the top. And the reason I was one of the top because I had, a formula for what I was doing. So I always had this formula and I always kind of create this formula to make it better. So I'd always uh, kind of get past steps a little faster and just, just, so I always created this. And so this brings me to a situation when I was working for the Los Angeles Dodgers. I was the in stadium DJ. Okay. And this is probably, what is this? Two, this is 2003. I pretty much did the whole entire season for the Dodgers, the home games. So that means, you know, at every single home game, 80 some odd home games I did that year. And I DJed. So you're well, as a DJ for a baseball team, you're responsible for the little pump up music, the cavalry charges, the claps, the thumps, the make some noise, all those little things that you have. You're in charge of that stuff, right? And so as a DJ, you're watching what your pitcher does too as well because if, if your pitcher strikes out someone, you have a little sound effect that you play for that, okay? So you always have these little things you do for each individual situation. A home run, yeah, I had like five home run songs at Dodger Stadium that I could choose from any one of these songs. So if the ball went over the fence, you could play, uh, you could play the correct song. and So you weren't playing the same song over and over and over. But by having a formula... This is what created a formula for me. I would be watching the pitcher, like the Dodgers pitchers, for a whole entire season. Just think about how many pitches they throw. A pitcher could throw over 100 pitches in one game. Relievers could come in throw another 20 to 40. It could be 140. There could be, uh, you might see upwards close to 300 total pitches per game between both teams uh, when, when you're at a game. And so think about that. You know, multiply that by 80 games and watching every pitcher throw and what they do, right? So you're watching every movement the opposition pitcher does because if your guy gets a single or a, a double or a home run or a triple, you're there to play a certain song that works with the, the mode, right? So I'm watching these pitchers and I'm watching them and I'm watching their formulas and I'm watching them get up there and throw their pitches and, you know, what they do on the mound before and, and how they prepare and how they attack each batter but more it was more about their technique that I would watch it just got ingrained in my head watching pitch after pitch after pitch for an entire season so fast forward 2004 comes up it's uh it, it's August right already been doing baseball for a while uh, take some time off to go do to spin music at the the Olympics in Greece 2004 uh, the Olympic Games were in Greece, Athens, Greece, and I was the DJ hired uh, to do baseball because of my affiliation with the Dodgers at that time. And I was a Dodgers DJ, so it was, you know, it was an easy, no problem at all. So we're there for two weeks. So you got time. You got time on your hand to kind of do things and hang out. And and there's two practice fields and two main fields uh, for games to happen with. The two main fields have stands in them and what have you. And, 
uh, and that's where all the games would play for, that would advance on basically the medals. But their practice fields were such. And then we had some days off. And so we got together, and there was a Field One crew that all of us who worked at Field One, we were able to put together a team, a baseball team, to go against the Field Two crew. And the Field Two crew didn't have as many people as us because Field Two didn't have as many workers or what have you, whatever. The number was different. So they had a couple amateur uh, Greek players on the team, team, guys that just about made the Greece Olympic baseball team but didn't, but didn't make it. But, you know, they were hanging out there, so they got to pick them up on the team. So we decided to have a game, right? And we decided to have this game where we're going to f- play full baseball. And so I wanted to pitch. For some reason, I just wanted to pitch. And I've never been like that where I was just like, I want to pitch. Because I always played outfield or what have you. And slow pitch, softball, sure, yeah, I pitched. But not really overhand, fast pitch, however I want to do it. But I went out there and did it. And I couldn't believe the velocity I was throwing the ball at. I had never thrown the ball harder in my entire life. Even when I played Little League, even when I tried out for the high school baseball team, all those years, I could not even throw near as hard as I was throwing. And the only thing I contributed to is all of a sudden it felt like I had a formula to what I was doing now and stepping into it, rearing back, stepping into it, having your shoulder end up facing the batter after, putting your weight behind it. And and you have to know the mechanics of pitching to be able to do that. Well, how did I get the mechanics? How did I pick up the formula? Well, you sit there as a DJ with your hand on a mouse ready to click it for any song at any point in the game, and you watch the pitcher do every pitch, go through his mechanics, go through his formula, and you're bound to pick something up watching something daily like that. And that's how it was for me, watching it daily. I saw it so many times that I went out there and I was throwing so fast, and I don't know what it was. Somewhere, probably in the high 80s, I know it wasn't touching 90s, but mid to high 80s, I was definitely throwing hard. Struck out, I think, six guys in that game. We won one to nothing in that game and I went away from there just scratching my head going how did that just happen how was I able to throw so hard how was I able to strike those guys out and the only thing that I could come up with was you know the year of just being there through 80 some odd games watching game after game watching pitcher after pitcher not to mention all the high school games I used to do that I used to volunteer and announce at and DJ at back in the day for Santa Barbara High School not to mention those, but you get used to it and I, you pick up the formula, you pick up the techniques, you pick up the mechanics and and that's what I did and that's led on to that. And so fast forward now going, the, the Olympics were over, basketball season's about ready to start up, I'm working for the Clippers, I'm the on-court MC. I'm feeling good, I have a strong arm, struck out a bunch of people at the Olympics in 04, yeah, on a practice field. Let me put the asterisk by that right there. So I'm feeling pretty good. I get into Staples Center and, you know, we got T-shirt cannons and stuff and you're shooting T-shirts into the crowd. And and I'm like ring leading this whole thing on the microphone, yelling at the fans and Clipper fans and all this. And I'm feeling pretty good. I feel like, man, I could throw, I could throw a shirt pretty good nowadays. So what do I do? I grab a T-shirt out of the, out of the box. It's It's taped. I rear back, and I'm going to chuck it to the upper section. Watch this. I threw it as hard as I could, and I tore a little muscle in my bicep just enough to where it gave me problems for years and still gives me a little bit of problems, but I was never able to throw uh, that way ever again and that hard. All in just one year, career over. (laughs) Pretty funny stuff, man. There you go. All right. Well, that's going to do it. This is Tame Your Talent. I'm Brad J. Thought I'd share that with you. Hey, check out um, check out my uh, the uh, YouTube page. Please check that out. T- Tame Your Talent on YouTube. I posted a video up of me freaking out uh, at the, the Mountain Dew Tour in Long Beach about a couple years ago. And I just I wrote, announcer loses it. I call it the, na- the title of this short. And all of a sudden, overnight, it gets like 1.4 thousand or 1.5, uh, 1.500. I mean, uh, 1,500, just like that view. So I was kind of tripping on that. And that kind of makes me let you know, check it out, okay? Because I got a pretty decent little YouTube thing. I'm working on it. Tame Your Talent, Behind the Scenes, Olympics, 
and whatnot and whatnot. Follow me on my social, Brad J A Y M C. Brad J A Y M C. That's going to do it. Tame your talent for your Sunday. Happy Sunday to you all. See you.